We made it to our site, site number 98 at Presqu'île Provincial Park. It's a great big site. And the best part is the actual view from the site. We are right across from the water and have a beautiful view and a beautiful breeze, which means no mosquitoes, deer flies, things like that. So far, so good. One thing I really like about this site is going into the trailer and seeing the beautiful view from inside. Briskeel Provincial Park has eight campgrounds, Craig's, Maples, High Bluff, Pines, Lakeside, Hidden Valley, Elmvale, and Trails End. There are 159 electrical sites and 205 non-electrical sites. There are three permanent tents that have a wooden shelter over top of them to protect them. You can rent them, similar to renting yurts and cabins. There are 10 group sites. There's one cottage, there's six trails, totaling 12.5 kilometers. There's a lighthouse interpretive center and a nature center. This is High Bluffs Campground with many waterfront sites. This is Maples Campground. This is Lakeside Campground. We are in Craig's uh, Campground. Very quiet here today. This is Hidden Valley Campground. This is something kind of unique to uh, provincial parks is a parking area for the walk-in sites only. So you park here, you walk in there, and uh, there's a bunch of sites down there, waterfront. And this is Trails End. Now we just did the whole campground area of the park and we're heading back to High Bluffs, our area, which is all electric and we love it. We get a beautiful sight, beautiful view of Lake Ontario here. Very nice. These waterfront sites are awesome. Beautiful views and a nice cool breeze. Originally when I looked online I thought that I'd be able to uh, go swimming right off the site, maybe put my kayaks in, paddleboard, but unfortunately it doesn't quite work like that. There is a uh, bit of a steep embankment right at the edge of the water. So it's a drop out of about eight or nine feet down to the water. Unfortunately, you can't really do that from here. We're gonna have to go down to the beach, but it's a beautiful spot. The Saladas have this location. We're across the street, still with an excellent view. The view from the trailer. Like there's sun, there's actually sun in here. This is site number 100. And look at the size of this site. Here's the post, all the way to that tree line. In many campgrounds, this would be made into three sites. 
but here at Presqu'ile, it's one huge site. And from this site, you actually have some water access. And it's all a smooth rock going right out there. You can easily walk in bare feet, and then it has a bit of a drop off, and you can go for a swim. If you're coming to Presqu'ile and you can get a waterfront site, that's the way to go. So after our hike, Cheryl noticed a little speck of dirt on her and she went to flick it away and realized it was attached. And she looked a little closer and saw that it had little legs on it and realized she has a tick and it's already buried its head in her. It was in her uh, upper arm. Um, so uh, I took a picture of it because I couldn't really see what it was. It was very, very tiny took a picture of it with my phone, zoomed in, and then I could see that it had legs and it was definitely a tick. So what we did is uh, we have a tick wrangler which is used to remove ticks. So you go like this. See it's so small. It's too small. I've got tweezers though. Let me see. So you're supposed to go like this and go under it and then pull, but it's way too small for that. So the good thing was because the tick was so small, that means it hasn't been feeding for too long. So I got a pair of tweezers and I grabbed a hold of the tick and I pulled straight out and it came out completely intact. Cheryl had a specimen bottle. We put the tick in the specimen bottle and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to the regional health unit. This area is known for ticks and the black-legged deer tick, which carries Lyme disease. So we're taking it to the regional health unit so that they can have a look at it and tell us if it is one of those ticks. If it is, we assume Lyme disease and uh, Cheryl takes a treatment to deal with that. The good news about all this is that Lyme disease normally can't come unless the tick has been on you for 24 hours. And Cheryl definitely would have noticed in the location that it was if it was on for uh, any length of time. We believe it might have been on for an hour or two tops. And like I said, because of the size of it, uh, it doesn't seem like it had been feeding very long. So everything should be good, but uh, it's something to watch out for. You, when you go in the long grasses and on these hikes, you have to check yourself for ticks afterwards.
Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do some laundry in this scrubber bag. It's a dry sack designed by an Australian. In this bag, there is a washboard with little nubbies. Oh. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a little bit of soap. You can use any kind of soap. I'm just using uh, Dr. Bronner's. So you don't have to measure it? No, just put a little squirt in. Okay. And we're going to fill it up with water. So there's two levels. The first level is this much water for say a shirt, two socks and underwear, or this one, two shirts, two pairs of socks and two pairs of underwear. So I only have three items, so I'll just do the lower level. And any kind of soap? Whatever soap you like. Okay. Soap is soap. All right, just a touch more soap actually. Okay, and I'll put these guys in. Oh, I should probably check the Kleenex. That's always our problem. Yeah, well, I don't have Kleenex in these. These are, bought, are pocketless. So they're in there nice and wet. And what we're going to do is roll this bag up a few times. One, two, three, four. And do up the clips. And then there's a little air valve here. So we're going to do that. Squeeze it. Like that. Go. Okay. So it's best to do this maybe outside or in the bathtub or something. So this is the washboard side, so we'll put it flat down and then we're just going to massage oh. the clothes on the washboard for two to three minutes. Oh, that gets right into the fibers. And then. it's got a little window so you can see. Alright. A few moments later. Okay, I think we're pretty much done. We will dump this soapy water out and then put some clean water in the rinse. And again, are you filling it up to that line or yeah. just? Yeah. Okay. Usually one uh, fill cleans the clothes pretty good, gets the soap out. So we're just going through and do the same cycle again. Okay. Does it matter which way you roll it? No. And again. This is a good workout too. Woo! Hello. Go. All right, we'll give her another massage. A few moments later. So then you figure that after that you've gotten enough for this. You've gotten the soap Yes. Up. Yep. So okay. we'll have a peek. Does it smell better too? Oh, that smells good. It smells nice and clean. All right, like that's lemon. Dump this bag again. All right. We'll pull these guys out and give them a little ring. There's no soap residue. Nope. Wow. That That's amazing. That is how you do laundry on the road when you're camping.
Okay, we had to pull over here because oh. it's crazy weather outside. How am I supposed to uh, get out? Tornado warning, uh, hurricane-like winds. It just calmed down for a second when we pulled into this plaza. Oh, I just parked. And like usual, <laughs> Cheryl has to go to the washroom. <laughs> so she has to run to the trailer to get out there. Ooh, good lightning. Well, I don't have my raincoat in here even. But the Moxies people are going out and getting all their benches that blew away. Look, there's the table. Oh, really? She's grabbing, she's bringing it back there, and the bench behind her. Oh, now it's time for Cole's notes for Presqu'il Provincial Park. We had a great four nights there. I enjoyed a lot of it. A big part of the enjoyment was the site that we had. Uh, we were at Site 98. It was a huge site, and it was right across the road from the water. So, like I said in the video, I loved sitting in the dinette, looking out the window, and seeing Lake Ontario. It was very nice, plus good breezes kept the bugs at bay. What do you think? Yeah, you can't beat the view on that first strip. That was uh, premium sites, but well worth the extra cost. There's a wide variety of sites. Uh, there's sites that are uh, more secluded, deeper in the woods. That's where most of the park is. Uh, but uh, like I said, we had uh, the sites, the premium sites, right along the waterfront. And if you can get those sites, I would highly recommend them. They're beautiful. The park had a lot of great things. The park had a camp store. It had a visitor center. It also had uh, a lighthouse uh, interpretive center. center. Yeah, so those are all things you can visit. There's lots of trails in the park. And uh, really, the best feature of the park? The beach. The beach. The beach is huge. So if you are a beach lover, that is the place for you. And at the far end of the beach is for kiteboarders. So if you are a kiteboarder, you might want to consider going to Presqu'il. Yeah, we really liked watching the kiteboarders go. They uh, can surf off those waves and take off into the air for a little while. It's a lot of fun to watch. I've uh, never tried it, but uh, if that's what you're into, you'd like to go to Presqu'il. Mm -hmm. So how would you rate the park overall? I'd probably give it a four. Yep. Out of five trailers, I too uh -huh. would give it a four. Because it covered bases on every level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review of Presqu'il Provincial Park. Till next time. And next time will be a review of McGregor Point Provincial Park. We'll see you then. <laughs>